Hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Shine Hard Conversation. I'm Johnny Bailey, the founder and executive director of the Shine Hard Foundation. For the past three years, we've been featuring talented millennials of color from a variety of industries to tell their stories. Our mission is to recognize, educate, connect, and inspire. This interview series was created to shine light on talented people who are taking risks, making sacrifices, and realizing their dreams. Our goal is to collaborate and progressively create a more enlightened community. In this week's interview, I sit down with Dr. Asia McKnight Barron, a talented plastic surgeon based in Atlanta. Dr. Barron is a graduate of Spelman College and the star of Lifetime TV's hit series, Atlanta Plastic. There's so much to learn from this conversation and I really hope that you guys enjoy it. Thank you for tuning in and remember, together we shine. Oh, Dr. Barron, time to shine. Okay. You ready? Let's do it. Cool. So <laughs> they say it's best to build your house on the rock and not on the sand. And that's kind of a testament to the foundation mm -hmm. of people. Um, you're a wife, a mother, a daughter today. Mm -hmm. And I want to know, um, I know that family is important to you. So mm -hmm. I want to ask you, what was growing up like for you? And uh, talk about your childhood a little bit. Um, well, I, we kind of moved around just a little bit, um, I, but I spent most of my elementary school years in California, Southern okay. California, and I moved here to Atlanta when I was about 13, 12 nice. or 13 years old. Um, but, you know, growing up, um, we're just a normal sort of middle class family. Yeah. My parents are immigrants from Jamaica. Oh, okay. And, yeah, uh, <laughs> and um, you know, uh, I had a heavy, you know, Caribbean influence mm -hmm. into my life, um, you know, so parents were definitely strict oh, wow. and academics were always you know, right. stressed yeah. um, you know in order to sort of instill that you have to work hard for right. what you you know dream to be because right, right. um, it just doesn't come easy right. you know my dad always used to tell me that you know you have two strikes to get to number one you're black mm -hmm. and number two you're a woman yeah. or a female right. you know and so um, you have to work twice as hard because of that so was like that a medical inspiration for you um were you watching like ER when you were younger and like I'm no, gonna be on that show? I, I, actually I think I was brainwashed by my parents. Really? I, I don't also, know, for as long as I can remember I knew that I wanted to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know exactly what doctor <laughs> what kind of doctor I wanted to be. But um, you know, I I think it was maybe from watching too much Cosby show <laughs> <laughs> or something growing Dr. up. Huxtable. Right. You know, so I think it definitely um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I just feel like that one stuck with me. Yeah. I remember growing up and saying, oh, okay, well, I can be the president. I can be an astronaut. I can yeah. be an artist. Mm -hmm. I can do all these things. And those opportunities were, no one ever said to me, you can't do that. Right. That's you good. know? Yeah, and so good. I think that was very important in me having options. Yeah. But the one thing that always kind of stuck with me was that I'm going to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And so whether it's brainwashing or the Cosby show or whatever, I just think it's something I was destined to be. Nice, nice. So we know that you went to Spelman. Mm -hmm. um, that was an amazing cross AKA there. Mm -hmm. um, then you went to Meharry Medical College mm -hmm. to get your uh, medical education. Mm -hmm. um, so talk a little bit about your journey from college to becoming a plastic surgeon. Like, mm -hmm. How did that happen? Well, um, you know, just Outside of you know graduating from high school, um, I decided to go to Spelman because I've, I you know I grew up in majority high schools my entire life. Um, you know in my elementary school I was the only black student for like the majority yeah. of the time yeah, that I except too. for one except for one year <laughs> except for one year <laughs> and there was someone else. Oh, but really? um, you know in the entire elementary school. So that's why you knew that one group that boy band group you were telling me about. No, everybody knew that. You just didn't. Know um, but, uh, so yeah, I think, um, you know, being, you know, sort of the, the only one, um, or, or almost sort of the token, right. you know, um, growing up in, you know, elementary school, um, and then, you know, in high school being, you know, a, a minority, I think I, I chose the, the yeah, I made this, the decision to go to Spelman just because I knew I wouldn't have to worry about being accepted. Right. Um, and it's not that I didn't feel accepted at those other institutions, right. but I just knew that I would fit in. Right. Um, and you know, I had excelled, you know, being a minority um, amongst the majority population. But um, it, you know, 
it was a, it was I was looking for something else. Right. And being that Spelman is all girls school, mm -hmm. it's a historically um, black college. Right. You know, I I I was looking for something else to get, and right. I got it on so many yeah, right. <laughs> different you got levels. Yeah, everything in one. I got right. everything. It was really the, one of the best decisions of really? my life. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. I went to Hampton University, and I would definitely say the same thing as one of the best decisions I ever made. Mm -hmm. So I relate on that HBCU mm -hmm. level. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so then from there you went to uh, Meharry Medical. So I went to Meharry, which is another historically um, black college. Right. Um, and so I decided to, I, I you know, um, went there because it was close, kind of close to home. Okay. It was in Nashville, Tennessee. Gotcha. Um, and, you know, I... I, you know, ended up doing very well there. Yeah. Um, you know, at Meharry, it's normally a smaller, uh, it, it's mainly based towards primary care. Mm. And so initially I thought I wanted to be an OBGYN. Okay, so primary care is what? So I'm primary care is mainly like internal medicine, like so family medicine, okay. sort of the main primary specialties. So internal medicine, pediatrics, family medicine, um, you know, kind of, uh, Sort of community medicine almost gotcha. as a whole, okay. um, and OB/GYN kind of right. uh, falls like in the there as well. Like the checkups and things that you exactly. Get right so yeah, like the routine uh, doctors that you see normally for health maintenance. Gotcha. And then there are specialties, and so um, and then you know so there are specialties sort of within medicine. Um, you know, in the surgery field, there are subspecialties, mm -hmm. right. which plastic surgery is one. Yeah. But then also in um, like the internal medicine field, there's specialties like. GI gastro, um, you know, where uh, you study the um, gastroenterological <laughs> system. Sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. You know, or there's immunology. There's, yeah. you know, there's so many different there's things, tons of cardiology, different things like that. that exactly, say, right. that it sort of break down within those larger groups. Okay. But um, Meharry was basically, um, it's a primary care based medicine, mm -hmm. uh, primary um, care based uh, college, and so thought I wanted to be an OBGYN. I was president of the OBGYN club really? <laughs> and all of that and very involved. But um, the first day I did my surgery rotation as a third year medical student, I was in the operating room and it was a super long case. I think we were, at, well, super long to my standards back then. But, <laughs> but um, it was probably like a seven hour case. Oh my gosh. Um, and I loved um, every minute of it. Yeah. Um, and so I think it was definitely a, um, you know, it, I, I knew that at that point I needed to be in the operating room mm -hmm. all the time. You really enjoyed that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it was, uh, it, you know, so then I looked into the, the different surgical subspecialties yeah. and, you know, I didn't necessarily want to deal with patients that were sick all the time. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. You know, I didn't want to deal with patients who were, you know, extremely critical, mm -hmm. you know, into which, you know, I was losing patients, mm -hmm. you know, where that was just routine. Yeah, that's like kind of emotion of the training, right? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, so I kind of avoided, you know, cardiothoracic yeah. <laughs> um, or, you know, um, and general surgery just didn't really speak to me. And so I, you know, stumbled upon, you know, just looking around plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. And so when I looked into the types of operations that were done, and also, you know, the, the course of study, right. you know, it really appealed to me. You know, with plastic surgery, there's so much variety. You could be operating on, you know, from head to toe, mm -hmm. from someone young or old. Okay. Um, you know, and there's, there's different subgroups within plastic surgery. Right. So, which, which groups do you focus on? Well, I focus on um, cosmetic surgery or okay. aesthetic surgery, right. um, as well as breast reconstruction. Okay. Um, and sort of within there is microsurgery okay. uh, for some of the microsurgical breast procedures. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, and then just general plastic surgery. Right. Um, but there's other things that, you know, that I learned during my training, cleft lip and palate repair, you know, big major um, cancer reconstructive procedures. Wow. Um, you know, hand surgery, you know, vascular microsurgery, gotcha. um, you know, so there's a lot of variety. It's a pretty big scope. It you is, and you know, I think with some of the spe specialization of general surgery, I kind of feel like plastic surgery is still the, is, it has sort of become the general surgery right. <laughs> almost. Is, I mean, because I is mean. Is that common now? I mean, not, no, not common. Oh. Basically, the general is as far as having so much variety within the field. Oh, okay. I you see, know, I see. Um, but I mean, it, it's it's awesome. Okay. Um, and the plastic surgeons that I encountered along the way were just very down to earth, right. you know, um, very outgoing people. And I kind of 
put myself in that category yeah, of yeah, person yeah. according to my personality. Yeah. And I think we kind of sub, you know, self-select, you know, people who are interested right. uh, according to those right. personalities well, and also those desires. Talk a little bit about how you um, gained your residency because I know you were one of the few uh, women right. that were able to achieve that. Um, right. What so, was that experience like? Well, I mean, I think that, um, any surgical field is now becoming more accepting of women. Okay. Um, not that it's, you know, I think surgical specialties are challenging in general just right. because of the, and I mean, and residencies are challenging in general right, just right, because right. of the time and everything like that. But surgery, you know, is known to just be a little bit more grueling. Um, and so uh, within general surgery and also the subspecialties, um, you know, historically there weren't many women. Um, but now over the course of the time course, more women have entered the field and done extremely well. Um, and so, you know, I'd done well on my um, board examinations and stuff in medical school right. and had good grades. And so um, once I decided I wanted to be a plastic surgeon, I yeah. did some rotations. Um, and visited some places, gotcha. and apparently I made a good impression. <laughs> <laughs> I was the first resident um, that was African Amer an African American female. Wow. Um, not the first African American, but the first African American female. Um, and so, you know, that was definitely, you know, sort of a little bit of a milestone. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, but a little flex. Uh, <laughs> but um, you know, it was an amazing experience, yeah. and I feel like that's exactly where I needed to be right. in life at that time. Kind of like confidence booster for you, or you know, how did how did that propel um, you going forward? How did you I feel? mean, it was just a reassurance that yeah. I was doing the right thing, yeah. and that this was the path that I was supposed to be. Right, on. right, right. So talk about the day to day life. I know we just met you here at a hospital. A lot going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just came out of surgery a little mm -hmm. while ago. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the day to day life for a plastic surgeon? Um, it varies. You could either be in the operating room all day, mm -hmm. um, doing you know whatever procedures that you do routinely. Right. And that's your favorite Excuse part. Me. Uh, what operating? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, operating is definitely my favorite part. Um, but uh, you could also be in the office seeing patients, mm -hmm. um, seeing new patients, new patient consults. Mm -hmm. um, also doing. Um, uh, checking up on your old patients, right. uh, pa people that you've operated on, um, and preparing for surgery and things like right, that in right. office. Um, or you can have a mixed day. Sometimes I'm in the office in the mm -hmm. morning, and then I come to the operating room right. in the afternoon. So is it long hours? Or you, how, how many hours a day do you think you work? I mean, it's definitely, you know, <laughs> a little bit more than a, a nine to five. Yeah. It could uh, vary depending on what I'm doing. Right. But one of the great things about being in private practice is that um, I can kind of tailor my schedule based on how busy I right. sort of want to be or not. So you kind of work for yourself, essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, yeah, it definitely is. And it's afforded me, you know, um, free time, you know, with my family occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, the thing is, is that once you get busy, you need to stay busy. Yeah. You know, because busy equals dollars. Right, right, <laughs> and right, you right, have right. to provide for yourself Absolutely. and your family. So, you know, um, busy means more hours. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. so um, things have definitely picked up. Over so, do you the have past a challenge finding clients, new clients? Um, not really a challenge. Oh, patients? Um, do you call them clients, patients? I guess they're both. Call them patients. Okay, patients. Yeah. Um, you know, I think uh, not really a challenge. Um, you know, I think early on in your career, sometimes it's hard to kind of pick up momentum, mm -hmm. um, and you know, let people know that you're out there and you're doing things. Right. You know, in order to get new uh, patients into your practice. But I think it just all depends. Yeah. You know, I think with anybody, it takes time. Right, you know, sometimes right. it takes about two years to kind of really yeah. establish yourself into a community and really have a good refer build up refer referral source from right. other physicians. Well, we, as we know, you've been on um, the television network with Lifetime, mm -hmm. the Atlanta Plastic Show, and mm -hmm. that seems to be really um, getting a lot of attention for you. Mm -hmm. How has that um, helped out your patient base? And, just your, your popularity, your notoriety in right. this area. Right, um, one of the reasons I got involved in the show is to kind of, you know, um, put my name out there. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> you sure, know? for sure. To really put my name out there, sort of introduce myself not only to Atlanta, but mm -hmm. I guess the rest of the world. To the world, yeah. Um, sure. And so uh, I think it was def it's definitely been a good move, a yeah. positive experience. Yeah, I've watched a couple episodes. Okay, yeah. thanks. Big shout. <laughs> um, so I think, uh, you know, definitely um, has helped with, you know, of course, the amount of traffic that's come, you know, into the practice. Yeah. Um, as far as people just, you know, asking questions and kind of trying to figure out, you know, what plastic surgery is about right. and whether or not they're candidates for surgery. Gotcha. So I, I think it's definitely been a good plus. Yeah.
talk about the day to day when someone comes to you and they want plastic surgery mm -hmm. but might not be mm -hmm. the person that you did. Right. So, you know, nobody ever likes to tell somebody no. Yeah. But I mean it happens quite often, at least in my practice. Really? Yeah, you know, I think the show, uh, I mean, outside of the show, um, I think it's definitely, you know, you have a patient that comes in every now and then yeah. that, you know, isn't a good candidate. They mm -hmm. either need to lose weight first um, prior mm -hmm. to having surgery or they need to get their health under control, mm -hmm. you know. Um, they either have other medical problems that are more important right. than um, cosmetic surgery or whatever surgery they're right. seeking at the time. And so you kind of have to really be a good judgment of character. Um, I have to be a little bit of a psychiatrist <laughs> or a psychologist, yeah. um, you know, as I'm talking to people to t try to glean what their uh, motivations right. are. And so, um, you know, I think uh, with the show, it's brought an influx of people asking questions mm -hmm. and people thinking that, oh, because that person on the show got surgery, I probably can too. Yeah. And so um, the amount of no's I have to actually <laughs> issue have increased yeah. um, just because of the, the overall traffic. But, um, you know, I'd rather, you know, them say no or have me have to say no prior to surgery than have somebody unhappy or have unrealistic mm -hmm. expectations afterwards. Yeah, I mean, if you're getting surgery, if you're not happy with yourself, no matter mm -hmm. what amount of surgery you get, it's not really going to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So, a lot of times I hear that plastic surgery is bad. People say that, you know, natural beauty is better. People <laughs> should stick to, you know, just being where they are. Mm -hmm. um, how do you com combat that? What are the misconceptions of plastic surgery that? You know, yeah, well, I've never heard that plastic surgery is bad. Oh. Unless it's bad plastic surgery. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I think. Uh, you know, it is a little bit of a balance. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think when people have unrealistic motivations for plastic mm -hmm. surgery, then that's when it's potentially bad, you know, yeah. or can turn out bad. Right. Um, I think, uh, you know, yes, people in all, you know, hopefully everybody can be happy with what God gave them. Right. But, you know, unfortunately, or fortunately or unfortunately, we're all very, very different. Right. And things happen over the course of our lives, which change who you were before. Right. You know, with those changes, you know, people want to kind of get their sense of self back yeah. or their sense of, you know, sexy back mm. almost to a certain degree. And I mean, it doesn't have to, you know, extend to just having children. People, you know, have weight loss and weight gain and you can change your body significantly. Mm. And so in order to fit um, you better in clothes, in order to you know, really feel confident about yourself, then sometimes things need to be contoured. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I think a lot of people who have the, the mindset that, you know, oh, you should deal with what God has given you yeah. and not, you know, alter that, you know, they probably haven't been insecure about a mm -hmm. body part, right. you know, or had a need to be insecure never about been something. There. Yeah, you know, so, I mean, until you put yourself in somebody else's shoes, then it's, you know, you probably shouldn't comment on them. Right. That's right. So what would you say is the best part of your job? Um, the best part of my job is that I get to operate. <laughs> um, and that I really get to make patients happy. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like I improve the quality of life for patients. Mm -hmm. um, whereas some doctors may, you know, literally save a life. You yeah. know, um, I feel like I'm saving a life by improving quality of life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and which I think is very, very important. If Absolutely. you're happy with yourself, um, not just your appearance, but things that you're able to do. Right. You know, um, some patients, if they have a significant amount of excess skin after weight loss, you know, they can't really move around like they want to, right. or they can't wear the clothes that they want to. Or a woman who has excessively large breasts mm -hmm. and, you know, wants to be more active, say with her family, until she gets a breast reduction, she might not be able to do that. Right. You know, right. and so I think improving the quality of life and making, you know, real physical changes right. um, for uh, my patients is really one of the most rewarding things. When did you when did you really know that, you know, that improving people's lives was, was what you wanted to do for the rest of your life? Um, you know, that, that day that, you know, I I decided on plastic surgery, yeah. uh, you know, I think um, it really spoke to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think in whatever people do, 
um, getting some sort of sense of satisfaction either from yourself or what you do for others um, sort of ties into whatever you're passionate about. Right. If it's community service, you get a sense of you know satisfaction or gratitude, gratification from helping somebody else. Right. You know, um, and so you know I do that, and I feel the same way in, in uh, my profession. Yeah. And so um, you know I think whatever you do, um, whatever your passion is. There's some sort of a uh, you know degree of satisfaction that you should get from Absolutely. it, or else you wouldn't be doing it, right? Sure. Right, right, right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's always a, a sense of self-interest that fuels your purpose, but ultimately it should be for the greater good of the community or humanity. I guess. Mm -hmm. um, for Twenty-year-olds, if I'm graduating college right now, what what's something that I need to know going going into the, the professional world? Um, in order to you know be successful or do whatever you really want to achieve, you have to grind. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I felt like it was a grind for me pursuing plastic surgery just because um, you know with Meharry being a primary care based institution, right. there were not any any really really any plastic surgeons that were affiliated mm -hmm. there at the time, um, and so I had to you know branch out and go to Vanderbilt to kind of get that exposure right. and get letters of recommendation. And I didn't really have anybody guiding me, you know, um, so to speak, uh, in this whole process. Right. Like my advisors, you know, my school couldn't really, you know, right. it was uncharted, give me uncharted territory. A little, a little bit. I mean, people who had, who had gone to Meharry, have um, become plastic surgeons. Okay. But um, the route that I took was. Um, an integrated program in which you match directly out of medical school, right, right. and nobody had done that at Meharry. That's before. why I call you a pioneer. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Um, a lot of people had gone the route of general surgery first, and then doing a plastic surgery fellowship. Uh, I see, I see. And so, um, you know, the route that I was taking was a little bit of uncharted territory. So, you know, I just felt like I had to grind, and you know, I set goals for myself, and I, you know, found out as much information of you know about what I wanted to do right. you know you can't just say okay I want to do you know XYZ and then you just think that it's going right. to magically there's happen. no plan there's no yeah. execution yeah you really have to make the opportunity for itself if it's not there already right. you know so I think um, really being uh, proactive about things and yeah. saying you know this is what I want I'm going to do the necessary things to make it happen you know was very instrumental in my success in the long run that's interesting so you, I'm kind of curious to ask you, like, what's what's the most difficult thing you you've ever done? Um, ever done. I mean, I felt like matching into plastic surgery <laughs> residency was definitely one of the most difficult things, and actually staying within it. Uh, um, but you can get booted and, out if you don't. I mean, with any residency, I mean, it's a job, yeah. you know, and you know, enduring that, the long hours, the time away from your family, yeah. missing out on social events, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or family time. I mean. It can be it can be taxing, um, but I guess one of the most difficult things is to have done all of that and be diagnosed with cancer at the same time. No way. Yeah. So my intern year of college, uh, or not college, sorry, intern year of residency, I was diagnosed with stage four um, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, and so that was a huge, uh, <laughs> you know, sort of turning point yeah. in which. Um, you know, I kind of really had to take a step back and really take care of myself. Right. You from know, the doctor to the patient. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so it was really an eye-opening experience. Um, you know, fortunately, my um, even though I was giving a stage four diagnosis because of where it was located, um, you know, it really uh, enabled me to really focus on myself, focus on my health. But it gave me an interesting perspective as far as being. A patient as well, right. and things that That's you know, you know, day to day going to appointments and really having a lot of control stripped away from you, um, and which is hard for a Type A personality <laughs> um, like me. But you know, being told, okay, you have to do this, you have to go here, take this medicine, right. you have to do this, you know, so it was the regulations now. All of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And so um, I understand that aspect, especially with the um, breast cancer patients that I deal with. Yeah. Um, I do a lot of breast reconstruction. Right. <laughs> So what would you say inspires you to succeed? You've done a lot of successful things. Um, really just, I, I don't know what has inspired me, you know, so to speak, as far as one thing to succeed. It's just wanting to, you know, not be mediocre. Wanting to not just be, you know, another doctor necessarily in the community. Um, you know, 
I guess maybe just having an aspiration to do great things. Yeah. And really, I don't know if that's necessarily, you know, just, you know, a desire of mine. You know, the more and more I kind of look back on things that have happened in life, mm -hmm. it just ends up, I think, really just being a part of the path that I have to walk. Okay. And, you know, it's just, I think, you know, potentially just destined by God. Yeah. You know, in which, you know, there have been, there have been times in which, you know, opportunities have presented themselves or not presented themselves. Yeah. And I'm kind of wondering, like, oh, you know, why is this? Why, or, why not? or, you know, or why not? Or, you know, things like that. And as I look back, I'm, you know, being, you know, going to Spelman, going to Meharry, right. you know, meeting my husband in Nashville, you know, matching at Baylor. Is he a doctor too? No, he's not. Okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, matching at Baylor in Houston getting diagnosed with cancer, but then being right next door to MD Anderson mm -hmm. so that I could get treatment. Yeah. You know, it's like the way things have kind of Organic evolved over my life, like this is just the path I'm following. Right. Like it's already been let, you yeah. know, um, it's already laid set out. out. You just it's gotta already, live it. Exactly, and you know, I think that's, you know, just one of the blessings yeah. that I've been blessed with. At this point, 2016, a lot of traditional uh, professions have the, the ability to innovate and become mm -hmm. a brand, mm -hmm. you know, as an individual or as, you know, a company. Mm -hmm. So talk about your experience with uh, Breast and Body Doc and why you're a brand. I mean, I think um, I've kind of made myself that. I think regardless of what anybody does, I think you should really brand yourself into whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it, it, I think when it meet, when it, you become a brand or you brand yourself or your business or mm -hmm. your profession, I think you're really giving yourself a standard to be upheld to, mm. you know, and so you, you're, you're putting it out that, hey, I do this, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty good at it, yeah. <laughs> you know, these are my reviews, this is my reputation, right. and you have to keep that brand, um, uh, you have to continue to develop that brand, sometimes you reinvent that brand, yeah. you know, in order to keep it, you know, competitive mm -hmm. with all the other brands that are potentially right, right, out right. there. Well, but um, I think for the most part, you know, a plastic surgeon is intriguing to a lot of people. It is, you it know, is. a lot of people love to see a plastic surgery reality show. I right. think that's why ours has been a success. You know, and so it's it's something. It's a, it's a field in which people are always curious about, right. and they always want to see a good before and after. Yeah. You know, and so I think um, you know by you know the advent of social media and you know internet and everything like that we're able to get that out a little bit more to the public mm -hmm. and then also you know through the media the media has done a lot with reality tv shows and things like that by exposing our brands right. to the general public so what are the three factors to your success what are the things that make up you know dr barron's dna to her success on a day-to-day -day basis um, I think success is just, um, you know, number one, probably being driven um, and, you know, just really having that drive to, um, you know, to just aspire to do great things. Yeah. Um, I think uh, another one would be um, just loving what I do, yeah. you know, and really getting a sense of satisfaction from it. Um, and I guess third, um, would be doing what I do well. <laughs> you know, I think that you That's do. That's the same answer, Dr. No, it's, no, it's not. Okay. Doing what I do and then doing what I do well, those are two different things. You know, because I mean, doing, or doing what I love. Okay. That's what I said. You weren't listening. Oh. Um, but doing, you know, doing what you love, you know, first having the drive and the passion behind it. Doing and performing that passion, right. you know, and then really just doing it well, yeah. you know, because you can do a lot of things with passion yeah. and it might not <laughs> turn out correctly. That's for real. You know, That's so real. I think, um, you know, really just honing my craft and, um, you know, delivering for patients um, is definitely one of the keys to my success. Yeah, but what frustrates you the most about today's culture? I think what frustrates me the most is that. Um, a lot of people kind of have the Walmart mentality in which, you know, if I don't necessarily like something, I could take it right back. Uh, or, you know, I guess there's a lot of patience that lacks in our community mm -hmm. now. Um, you know, and you can sort of blame, you know, the internet, social right. media, yeah, right, things right. like that. We have so much information that's at our fingertips. Right. It's like, boop, 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 boop. Yeah, and so people want that want what they want now. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, gosh, the amount of people who come into my office and they're like, yeah, so can we schedule surgery to, you know, next week? And I'm like, no. <laughs>
<laughs> and no you concept know? of time whatsoever. No, no, it's like, you know, there's uh, people what they want what they want now. Yeah. And I've had people actually be uh, uh, upset at the fact that I was busy. Wow. You know, yeah. <laughs> and their surgery might not be for two months. Oh my goodness. You know, and so it's, it's kind of, you know, I, I don't know. I think, you know, sometimes we have to slow down and kind of yeah. really stop and smell the roses, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, you know, sort of appreciate you know, the, the advances that we've had, but I think not let those overwhelm us, you know, just because there's so much at our fingertips and people, I don't know, it's just a, a lack of patience. Um, and I mean, I've been guilty of it yeah, I think we as all well. Have, I know we're all been there. Yeah, you know, but I think, um, you know, there's a lot of, I think value isn't been being put on services as much as anymore. Yeah. I think. Educating people is something that I'm very passionate about. And mm -hmm. I think, these interviews are, are very, very powerful because I'm putting people like you from a variety of industries who can speak to young people and mm -hmm. uh, our peers about what they need to know in order to become like us or be in a certain industry or get to their own peak and their own level of success. So I would ask you, um, for young people who want to you know, break through into the medical industry or maybe specifically plastic surgery, uh, what advice would you give them and what's the mindset? Mm -hmm. I mean, the advice is really to um, strive to be, you know, great. Uh, really excel in all that you do. Yeah. Um, I think if you, you know, really set a standard for yourself, um, and I know your parents tell you this all the time, <laughs> but you need to make good grades in school. So that does uh, matter. You know, I mean, it does matter, you know. Um, uh, and it's it everybody may not make straight A's you know but I mean I think it, at least if the effort is there and the effort is appreciated yeah. and recognized then I think you can still excel you know because everybody's in book smart right you know so how do you um, how does someone who's not book smart still become a physician or you know a surgeon? I mean I think you I think if you exert that effort mm -hmm. then that extra effort you know those extra hours that you may spend studying mm -hmm. those will translate Potentially into your, good grades. To your oh, to your, you know, into your yeah, okay. into your performance. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, and so, or at least you know, you'll definitely you, you can hopefully be above average, right. so that you can at least you know get an acceptance to a, a good college or a good medical school, um, and then on to residency. I think what makes you a good doctor is your experience. Um, I think your training, um, and potentially where you train, what you've been exposed to, um, and then your passion behind it. Um, and the compassion that you have for your patients, mm -hmm. and then your overall skill. You know, those are things that I think make up a good doctor, and you can have all of those attributes no matter which school you went to. Like, what do you do to relax? Um, you know, I you know do yoga, I exercise, I you know try to read. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, what I you shop. Reading? What's a book? Um, yeah, a bookshelf right now. Uh, right now I'm reading Lean In Lean by in. Sheryl Sandberg. Okay, yeah, I've heard of that. And so. Um, you know, just I don't get much leisure, leisure reading in, <laughs> so I'm trying to be better with that. But, um, but yeah, I think uh, you know, just those little things, shopping, you know, taking a walk, spending time with my yeah. daughter and my husband, you know, yeah. things like that, uh, you know, really make me happy. So, um, can you tell everyone how they can find you on social media, when to tune in to the show, and anything else mm -hmm. that you you know want people to know? Well, um, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter at breast in body doc. It's the letter N, not an and. <laughs> so it's breast in body doc on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I have a new Facebook page coming up, um, so you could just search for me by name, uh, by Dr. Aisha Barron. Um, I'll actually be stepping out on my own into my own medical practice um, called Breast Body Beauty Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery in the fall. A lot of words there. Uh, <laughs> they're good words though. Yeah, for sure. Um, and uh, you know, you can tune into Lifetime um, to watch me on Atlanta Plastic. Um, we have two more episodes left, and so um, they, the last two episodes will air this on Wednesdays. Um, at 10 p.m. So the episode this Wednesday will be at 10 p.m. on Lifetime, okay. and then the following um, uh, Wednesday will be the season finale. Nice. Um, and so you know, uh, tune in, get those ratings going, so that we get picked up for a third season yeah, for if sure, you want to see sure. more. So we'll definitely be following Dr. Barron. Please mm -hmm. go on, follow her on Instagram, <laughs> like her on Facebook. You can find me, JV's Food for Thought, on Instagram, and of course follow the Shine Heart uh, Project. ShineHeartFamily.com and ShineHeartFamily on Instagram. And um, you guys, keep following your dreams, keep following your passion, because passion changes everything.
So, together we shine. See you guys next week. Growing older, getting close to my prime, and my prime, then it's over.